Hi, welcome back to the ShareSite channel. In this video, I'll talk about how to handle invalid holdings and corporate actions in ShareSite. What is invalid holdings? Invalid holdings are holdings that have a negative quantity. That means one or more of your sale quantity during your holding period is more than the total quantity that you have on hand at that point in time. You can see a holding is invalid because of the buy quantity is less than the sale quantity. Here's another example where one of the sale trades is invalid because the sale quantity is more than the quantity held at the time of the selling. The reason why your portfolio has invalid holdings is because when you import your trades data from your brokerage account into ShareSite, your brokers only include market buy and market sell trades. What that means is that any off-market transactions like broker transfer, dividend reinvestments, capital raising, two corporate actions like merger, acquisitions or demerger that happen during your holding period will create this negative quantity. Before we get into how to fix it, the first question is, do you need to fix them? Here are three questions that can help you decide if you should fix them or remove them from your portfolio. The first question is, do you still own the shares? You probably have to fix them if you still own those holdings in your portfolios. But if you have already sold those shares many years ago, then you can consider removing them if it is not worth the effort trying to figure out what happened back then. The second question is, do you need to keep a record of your holdings for tax purposes. If you need them for tax reasons, you should keep them. Otherwise, you can consider removing them. The last question is historical performance. Some of our customers use ShareSite to track how their portfolio has performed in the past, while some other customers just want to track their current portfolio. Therefore, you can consider removing those holdings if past performance isn't that important. Now, what are the benefits and drawbacks of fixing invalid holdings compared to removing them? The benefit of fixing invalid holdings is that you can get an accurate historical portfolio return. On the flip side, the drawback is that sometimes it can be time consuming and tedious to fix these holdings. The benefit of removing invalid holdings is time savings. On the other hand, the drawback is that your historical performance return will not be as accurate as compared to fixing them. Now, if you decide to fix your invalid holdings, I'll show you how to do that. If you have more than one invalid holding, here is what I would recommend. First, work on those holdings that you currently have on hand and then work on those that you have sold in recent financial year, which you needed for your tax reporting. And lastly, work on those that you have sold some time ago. This make sure you work on the most important, which is to get your portfolio matched up with your brokerage account before you work on everything else. There are four common reasons that cause invalid holdings. The first one is make sure you import all your historical trades from your brokers. One thing that we commonly see is that customers tend to import buy or sell trades for a particular financial year. And that is fine if you buy and sell the shares within the same year. Otherwise, you will have to import the complete history. So make sure the file include all the trades since inception. The other common reason for invalid holding is dividend reinvestments. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, your broker Brokers only provide market buy and market sell trades. Therefore, it doesn't include any additional shares that you would receive from dividend reinvestment. We have a separate video for dividend reinvestments and I'll put that link on the right hand corner. So please watch that video if you have dividend reinvestment. The third reason is broker transfer. If you have transferred your holdings across different brokers, the trades that you have done in your previous broker will not show up in the current broker. The solution here is to see if you can get hold of those trades that you did with your previous broker. If you can, add those into your portfolio. If you don't have access to those records, my recommendation is to create an opening balance. When you transfer your holdings, your current broker should have a record of the total cost base and the total quantity as at the transfer date. Here, I'll show you an example. This stock has no buy trade because it was transferred from another broker. So what you can do here is create an opening balance trade. The date will be the transfer date, enter the total cost base and the quantity at the time of the transfer and hit save. The next one is corporate action. 
Some corporate actions like capital raising, merger, acquisitions or spin-off can create invalid holdings. Now just as a disclaimer here, what I suggest on how to handle invalid holdings, especially for corporate actions, is not a tax or finance advice. I highly recommend you read the official documents for full details. If necessary, talk to your financial advisor or accountant. When a company decides to raise capital from its shareholder, it is called capital raising. Capital raising can come in the names of share purchase plans, entitlement offer, book bill, and so on. If you have participated in a capital raising, all you need to do is to add that as a buy trade. The price will be the offer price and the trade date will be the date you receive the shares. As you can see, I'm short of 500 shares because I participated in a capital raising offer. So what I do is create a buy trade enter the shares received and the offered price. For merger and acquisitions, there are three common scenarios. You receive full cash in exchange for the shares that you originally owned. You receive new shares from the company that acquired your shares, or you receive a mix of cash and shares in the new company. In the context of invalid holdings, it is most likely that you have acquired the shares of the new company which you later sold. Now it depends on the context of the merger, there are many different ways to handle it, so it is always best to read the full details of the merger booklet. But here I will show you an example that if there is a cost base rollover, that means the cost base of the original holdings get transferred to the new company, you can use the merge function to do that. Here, a holding is invalid because I received shares after it acquired shares of a company that I previously owned. So what I do is go to the holding that I originally bought. Under the Edit Settings tab, select Merge This Holding, search ARU, enter the quantity received, and hit save. For a demerger, a company that you own spins off a subsidiary of that business and you end up getting shares in that subsidiary which you later sold. What you do here is find out if there was any cost based allocation from the original company to the subsidiary. Generally, when a company spins off their subsidiary, a percentage of the original cost base get transferred or allocated to the newly listed company. If, for example, the cost base allocation is 20%, what you do here is go to the original company, create an adjust cost base trait, enter 8020 in the demerger calculator and hit save. This amount taken out from the original company will be used as the opening balance for the newly listed company. So you will create an opening balance enter the amount as the total cost base and the quantity you receive. Here, I've put together a flow chart for all the things that I've just gone through so it is easier for you to decide what to do. Feel free to screenshot the flow chart for future reference. I hope you find this video helpful. If you are still not sure how to fix your invalid holdings, please reach out to our customer support team using the chat function in your ShareSite account or send us an email at support at shareside.com. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.